With a severe lack of stylized HDRIs on the internet, us 3D artists have been forced to make our own skies and backgrounds from scratch. But what if I told you there was a way to turn photorealistic HDRIs into stylized ones in under 10 minutes? Hopefully, the intro doesn't count. But first, welcome to the Coffee Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So make sure to like the video and subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss out. And without further ado, let's get started. Now, to quickly tell you what you can expect from this tutorial, we'll start by adding a free photorealistic HDRI into an empty Blender project and isolate the sky and clouds so that we can recolor them. We'll then move into the compositing editor to make the clouds look stylized, and then learn how to export our stylized HDRI so that you can add it to any project you would like. And somewhere in the video, I'll share a bonus tip with you all that has been super helpful for me when working with HDRIs for my own projects. So keep an eye out for that. But first things first, we'll need to download an HDRI to convert. If you want to use your own HDRI, feel free to do so. Just note that the steps I share in this tutorial may need to be slightly adjusted to fit your exact HDRI. The specific HDRI I'm using for this project, on the other hand, is linked for you to download in the description if you want to follow the exact steps. And if you want to get your hands on this tutorial's project file and the extra HDRIs I've stylized, they're all available for my Magic and Elder Mug patrons. So check it out, the link is in the description. But after we've downloaded our preferred HDRI and saved it to a special folder, we can open up a new project in Blender, delete everything in the viewport, optimize our render settings, and enable Node Wrangler if you haven't already. Once that's all done, we'll open the shader editor in a new window and change it from object to world shading. We don't need the background node, so we'll just get rid of that and then add an image texture so we can open up our newly downloaded HDRI. Future Christian here. I just realized the image texture isn't what we actually want and instead we're going to add an environment texture, which will then have the correct settings for your HDRI. I was gonna cut that out of the video, but it seemed pretty important since the image texture and environment texture look very similar. So just in case anyone would have made the same mistake that I did, now you know. But anyways, let's get back to the video. Now, we'll press Ctrl T on our image texture and add an HSV node with its saturation set to 1.5, two brightness and contrasts, and a mix color node. We'll also want to add two sets of nodes that I use for accurate axis gradients. I am moving a bit quicker with these as I've shown how to make them in several previous tutorials, but feel free to pause this tutorial at any time to get a better look at the nodes on screen. With that being said, the first separate will have its X output connected and the second its Z output. And for the Z axis gradient, we'll want to duplicate our color ramp with Shift Control D to keep its connection and slide it just below with its color stops reversed. We'll also need to change the top color ramps type to ease and add an extra black and white color stop to look the way they do on screen. We'll then connect the first gradient node setup to the factor of our mix color node and the two brightness and contrast nodes to the A and B inputs of our mix color as well. Oftentimes an HDRI will be brighter on one side. So separating the HDRI into two halves essentially allows us to turn down the brightness and contrast on one side without affecting the other. So our B inputs brightness looks best at about negative 0.3 and contrast at negative 0.7. The other brightness and contrast can be left as is for now, but if you ever want to come back and change something up, it'll be there for you to mess around with. If you need to rotate your HDRI, you can use the mapping node's Z-axis rotation to do so. But for this HDRI, we won't need to. So after that, we'll add two color ramps, each with two additional color stops to give our sky a bit more stylization. The color stops should be placed at positions 0.15, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8 with the hex codes you see on screen. 
We can also add two more mix colors and connect them right after our color ramps. Use the color pickers to copy the lowest colors of the color ramps to the B input of our mixes and connect the color ramp of our Z axis gradient to the factor of each mix color. This will cut out the sun overhead, which will allow you to add a new sun in any position you would like for your specific scene. But to continue connecting each set of nodes, if we add a mix color and connect our color ramps like so, we can increase the factor from zero to one to change our sky from day to night. This will give you a lot more options for nighttime sky settings. And as a bonus, this isn't the bonus tip by the way, you can also use this method to change the color of the sky to whatever you want, just in case you want your scene to have some supernatural weather or to be on a completely different planet. Either way, we'll want to add a noise texture, two color ramps, and a Voronoi, which we will change to smooth F1, and plug in our mapping node to the vector inputs of our new textures. And if we adjust a couple settings, as you see on screen, and attach it to our main node setup with a mix color set to overlay, having a factor of 0.2, we'll get some extra texturing throughout our sky that almost gives it a kind of oil painting look. The settings you use for this section are completely up to you, but after that, we'll want to duplicate our overlay, setting its factor to about 0.6, and connecting our Z-axis gradient's secondary color ramp to the B input. We'll then change our black color stop to a mid-blue tone to give our sky a subtle gradient that makes it easier on the eyes. And with that, we have completed the shading steps for our sky. But before we move into the compositing editor to fully stylize our HDRI, let me just say how thankful I am for my patrons. The day this video is scheduled to upload on YouTube marks the first anniversary of the Comfy Mug channel. And it's all thanks to my patrons that we've made it this far, especially my Elder Mug members. You guys are so generous. This Patreon community has been such a blessing to me and I am so grateful for all of you and what you've done to make the Comfy Mug possible. And if you, the viewer, would like to become a Comfy Mug patron and get some custom-built anime assets in return, all you need to do is click the link in the description. Your support is really appreciated. Now, changing our shader editor to the compositor, we we'll want to enable nodes and also viewport compositing so that we can see our compositing effects in real time. As for the effects themselves, this is where you have a lot of wiggle room, as far as settings go. Overall, the main nodes you'll be using are a filter node set to box sharpen or diamond sharpen, two Kuahara nodes, one with the default classic setting and another with the anisotropic style selected, and a mix color node connecting everything together. Now, if you won't be adding any compositing effects to your future projects, particularly the Kuahara filter, after you've rendered this HDRI, your node settings should look something like this. But if you're going to use the standard compositing settings I use for all of my projects, you want to have your compositing settings look more like this. And again, this part has a lot of room for you to find a look you like best. And some settings look great on one HDRI, while at the same time make a different HDRI look really crunchy. So adjusting the mix colors factor and the factor of the sharpen will be the main settings you'll want to play around with to get a good result. And after you've found a look you like, make sure to give yourself a quick high five and then hover your mouse over the viewport and press the zero on your number pad to align your view to the X axis and add a camera. And if we press control number pad zero, our view will automatically lock to the camera view. After that, we'll head over to our render settings, and up until this point, we've been working in Eevee, but we'll need to change our render engine to Cycles now, so that we can get the correct camera settings to export an HDRI. And once we've switched to Cycles, we'll want to make sure denoising is enabled so our render looks smooth. And we can also reduce the max samples for our HDRI, so it doesn't take hours to render. Somewhere around 1024 seems to do the trick. But once that's all done, we'll head one tab lower to the output menu to make a few changes to the resolution for the proper HDRI aspect ratio. 
For the width, we'll increase this to 2048, and the height will decrease to 1024, and increase the detail percentage to 400%. We'll also want to scroll down a bit in this menu and change the file format from PNG to Radiance HDR for obvious reasons. And once we've done that, we can head down to the camera properties and select the panoramic option for our camera type. And in our new panorama type option, we'll change this from fisheye to equirectangular. I'm surprised I said that right. And now our HDRI is finally ready to render. But to save more processing power for your computer, go ahead and change the shading mode to viewport shading. Remember to save your project with Control S, and then we can go up to our render options in the top left side of your screen, click on the render image option, and then get up to touch some grass and rehydrate while it's rendering. And after saving your HDRI to a special folder, you have your very own stylized HDRI that you can use for all of your own stylized projects. And as a bonus tip for you guys, if you use a light path node, mix shader, and a mix color node, and connect them all as you see on screen with the is reflection ray connected to the factor of the mix shader, you can determine how much or how little your HDRI's world lighting affects the objects in your scene by changing the factor of the mix color and adjusting the B input color to whatever you want. Now, I recently made a tutorial for my top three tips for stylized shaders in Blender. And if you wanna learn how to use those techniques, you can click on the video, cause it's coming up right now.